let's look at the functions of an operating system. So what are the different things that an operating system does? We learned that an operating system makes your system operate, that it, uh, you know, to use the definition that we came up with, it's a collection of programs that manages and coordinates activities taking place within a computer. So we've learned that it manages and coordinates activities within a computer. I really think that that's a key phrase right there. So I'm actually going to just shrink this down. Operating system manages and coordinates activities within a computer. Perfect. I love it. Simplified. Making things simple, it's great. Make things as simple as possible, but not more simple. Uh, that's an Einstein quote. Make things as simple as possible, but not simpler. Make things as simple as possible, but not simpler. Albert Einstein. Uh, when somebody asked him, you know, uh, why do you use soap when you shave? He said, make things as simple as possible, but not simpler. <laughs> I don't know. My head's full of random trivia sometimes. All right. I like, I like that quote. Uh, operating system manages and coordinates activities within a computer. Uh, so what exactly is it doing to manage and coordinate those activities within a computer? What is it doing? What's that operating system doing? What are the different functions it's doing to manage and coordinate activities within a computer? Well, the first uh, function that an operating system does is it provides a user interface. And there are two types of user interfaces. There is the command line user interface. And there's a graphical user interface. So let's look at the command line user interface first. And we could do that. We could go see the old command line user interface that was uh, around under DOS by clicking start. And then in our little box right here, some computers you have to click run. If you have an older operating system, click run and then type this in. But if uh, you just have a little box right there, you just type CMD and CMD comes up. And here is your command line user interface and I could type things like help and it displays all of the different you know sh sh uh, commands that I would use to run this command line user interface a really crappy way to deal with a computer but that's one of the functions of an operating system to provide the user interface back in the day it used to be the command line user interface and now we have the graphical user interface which is this this right here it's all this it's being able to click on stuff and drag things around it's uh, based on graphics, graphical user interface. So one of the functions of an operating system provide provide the user interface. Uh, the next function of an operating system is to finish booting, starting up the computer. The computer starts up by loading BIOS, which is stored in ROM. And a BIOS is the basic input and output system, which gets the computer up and running at a basic level. That's why it's called the basic input output system. And once the computer is up and running at a basic level, uh, or once it's booted to that basic level and has loaded BIOS, it can start loading the operating system off of uh, some secondary storage, usually. Yeah, always. Uh, it's, it can start loading the operating system off of secondary storage, so a flash drive, a DVD drive, a hard disk drive, a solid state drive. And uh, the operating system then finishes the boot process, finishes the boot process. Um, and what does that mean to finish the boot process? I don't know. I really don't know. You could read about it. <laughs> it's basically, you know, just making sure the computer is getting up and ready and, you know, configuring devices and having thing, every, everything ready to run, uh, getting ready for you to come in and enjoy the computer to its fullest extent. That's what the operating system does. That's another one of its functions, to finish the booting process. Uh, it also configures the hardware. So this is probably part of what it does. When it finishes the booting process, it finishes configuring the hardware. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm including a lot of stuff in here. If you look around on the web, we'll look at this briefly. There's a few different, uh, you know, people include different things in this list. And so I'll show you that at the end of this. All right, what else does an operating system do? Uh, what, what are, what's another operating system function? It interfaces with the hardware and it runs the hardware. It interfaces with the hardware and it runs the hardware. So that's uh, really pretty much this diagram right here, right? The operating system is interfacing with the hardware, and it runs the hardware. The operating system, in fact, is written for specific hardware, specific CPUs with specific instruction sets. The operating system is written for it. So the operating system, one of its functions is to interface with the hardware and run 
the hardware. Another way you could think about that would be the operating system manages the hardware. That's how a lot of textbooks say it, but manages is just kind of, you know, it's just general. It sounds good, but it really doesn't convey a whole lot to me. And here I'm using it. Another function of the operating system is to manage networking. Uh, so managing networking is basically like if you want to connect your computer to other computers or to the Internet, the operating system manages all of that networking. Uh, operating system also manages security. So, uh, so you could set you could set a password on your computer, and you could set that at the BIOS level, which uh, pre pre precedes the operating system. So you could set a password at the BIOS level, and there is security at the BIOS level. Uh, but you could also set a password at your operating system level, so that when your operating system comes on, you got to type in a password to get into it. So you can actually have your computer set up so when it's booting. Uh, you get a password at the BIOS level, okay, and now we'll start loading the operating system, and, uh, and then when that loads, it'll give you another password. So one of the functions of an operating system is to manage security, and that includes passwords, things like biometrics, if you have biometrics connected to your computer, firewalls, and virus protection, firewalls and virus protection. Uh, so that'd be some of the stuff that operating systems do to manage security, and that's not a, 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 that's not a comprehensive list. There could be other things in there. Uh, operating systems also manage resources and schedule jobs. So again, that kind of comes back to uh, building on, well, building on uh, this idea right here that the operating system interfaces with the hardware and runs the hardware, manages the hardware. An operating system also manages that hardware, the resources, the RAM, um, the CPU, and how much it's processing and what it's processing. And when it's processing, it schedules the job. So when things get up and running inside the computer and everything's running at full steam and the engines are all cranking away, and, you know, whatever's happening inside there, when it's all working, the operating system is sort of the traffic cop or the good parent managing everything and saying what can happen when. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have multiple, uh, multiple programs running, uh, competing for scarce resources, like, you know, which program gets to use the CPU and when, which program gets to have its jobs uh, processed and when, right? Like uh, Microsoft Word needs something processed, Google Chrome browser needs something processed, in what order does that stuff get processed? And so the operating system, one of its functions is to manage resources and, you know, the physical hardware and what software is running and what needs to be done when, so scheduling those jobs. It's one of the functions of an operating system. I'd like to think of it as a traffic cop saying, you know, which traffic gets to flow when and where. Uh, the operating system also provides file management. So uh, at the basic level, you know, that's part of the user interface. We've got Windows Explorer, where I can go in and I can look at all of my files. I can look at my files, man. They're all right here. Here's this week, here's last week, here's the other, you know, previous weeks. There's all my file management. So the operating system provides file management, but not only limited to the file management we find in the graphical user interface, but also it provides file management, you know, for disks and things like that, like FAT32 and NTFS, right, which is the file structure for disks. So uh, those are the functions of the operating system. And... Uh, you know, I like uh, this definition on how stuff works, of how operating systems work. And so I'm just going to show you a couple of things from this. And the first thing I'm going to show you is that how stuff works as the operating system's tasks in the most general sense, right, fall into six categories. Processor management. So what's get, what gets processed and when? And then also the operating system's interfacing with a specific processor or CPU with a specific instruction set. So the, the, the operating system is uh, doing processor management. Memory management, right? So it helps manage memory. And so one of the things that it will do is if RAM, memory, we refer to RAM colloquially as memory, if RAM starts to get full, it will uh, it'll handle that. The operating system will handle that because you can fill up your RAM. And that's actually what happens with older computers when you try to run newer software and older computers, RAM uh, starts to get full. And so the operating system helps manage that. Device management. So here's just a general category that like throws all hardware into the, into the kettle. The operating system does device management from printers to monitors to USB cameras and microphones and speakers to drives, DVD drives and flash drives and 
whatever, all of that. Operating system manages all that other hardware. Storage management, again, right? File systems, NTFS, FAT32, what storage is there? How do you access it? I could go into Windows Explorer and I could see my different storage here, right? Uh, again, it's just managing that hardware, man. It's managing the hardware, man. It really comes down to, dang, here we go. It really comes down to operating system, written for hardware, managing hardware, making hardware run, you know, saying what hardware gets to be used when and how and why and by what programs, right? Traffic caught between application software and the hardware. Wait, you can't do this yet. We still have this other program doing something. Okay, now you can go. Traffic caught, right? So uh, it is uh, doing storage management, hardware management. Application interface, that's the U. Oh, application interface. Application interface. So that is, again, this right here, application interface, right? So application software is written for a specific operating system. And so we say that this uh, operating system provides an interface for application software. And there's actually even something called APIs, right? Application Programming Interface. And an API is like something that uh, helps you program for specific operating systems. Um, yeah, all right, we'll stop there with that definition. And then finally, it provides a user interface. So uh, a shorter list than, than mine. Didn't talk about security or networking in here, but uh, this is the most general sense, providing the user interface, a big one. So that's, uh, that's kind of what uh, How Stuff Works says. I like this first page here where they say uh, operating system does two things at its simplest level. Manages the hardware and software resources of the system. Right, and provides stable, consistent way for applications to deal with the hardware without having to know all the details of the hardware. I like that definition right there. Provides a stable, consistent way for application software applications to deal with the hardware without having to know all the details of the hardware. So uh, if you want, you can pause the video right now because this is also all pretty good to read. And here's a consistent application programming interface allows a software developer to write an application on one computer and have a high level of confidence that it will run on another computer of the same type, even if the amount of memory or the quantity of storage is different on the two machines. So you could uh, read this. Pause the video now. Pause it now if you want to read this. I'm in a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, what kind of a barker, like a barker at the fair, a carnival barker mode. I'm in a carnival barker mode at these videos this morning. I got to keep myself entertained. What can I say? Uh, and then I found some other information, overview of functions of an operating system at University of California, Davis. What's an OS for anyway? So I thought that was kind of interesting. Load application programs for execution, provide services, input output in the form of functions, enable time sharing, enable virtual memory, which we'll talk about, maintain the file system, manage I.O. So this is how some professor up at Davis describes it. I don't think it's the best definition, but kind of interesting to look at. Here's some school in Australia. How do they define it? Boot the computer, perform basic tasks, manage various peripheral devices, mouse, keyboard, provide a user interface, handle system resources such as computer's memory, sharing with CPU, and uh, provide file management, right? Uh, which refers to the way the operating system manipulates, stores, retrieves, and saves data. So that is the operating system. And, uh, you know, it's all very cool stuff. And those are the different functions of an operating system. And uh, I feel like I should end this video, but there's part of me that wants to go on, and I don't know why. Perhaps it's because, I don't know. I'll leave you with a joke. It's not an operating system joke. It's just a joke. All right, so uh, what did, here is a monk. Here's a monk. That's not the monk I'm looking for. Zen monk. There's the monk I'm looking for. So in Buddhism, people want to become sort of one with everything. And the idea in Eastern philosophy that we are, um, you know, unique separate selves, that we even have a self, is said to be an illusion. And that if you awaken, what you awaken to is the reality that, you know, while, yes, you know, life has taken manifestation in this one form, it is actually, you know, uh, uh, just another expression of life, and life is everything. The life that inhabits me is the life that inhabits the tree. It's the life that animates dog. It's the life that animates a cat. 
It's the life that animates every person I see. And that same life force, which is in me, which is in you, which is in the trees, which is in the grass, that same life force is the same life force, no matter what it's manifesting in. And so enlightenment, awakening, is realizing that you are really that life force. And yes, you have taken form in one you know, manifestation, but that life force is uh, the same in, uh, in all things which are alive. And so we're all actually one. We're all one. So here's the joke. Uh, what did the Zen Buddhist say to the hot dog vendor? Make me one with everything. <laughs> and then the hot dog vendor made the Zen Buddhist monk. He made uh, the hot dog vendor made the Zen, Zen Buddhist monk a hot dog and gave it to the monk. And the monk gave the hot dog vendor 20 bucks. And the monk ate his vegetarian hot dog, of course. And, uh, and then when he was done eating it, the monk said to the hot dog vendor, he said, hey, buddy, what about my change? Because, you know, he gave him 20 bucks for the hot dog. And uh, the hot dog vendor said, change comes from within. <laughs> there we go. There's the joke. All right. Uh, I will see you in the next video.